families. Welcome to APU. How are you feeling? Come on, we can do better than that. How are you feeling? Yes, indeed. You did it. You did it. You supported your student to this point, and we are so excited that they are now a member of our community. And we're thrilled that you're also a part of our community. So welcome to APU. Uh, my name's Keith Hall. I serve as Vice President uh, for Student Belonging here at APU. I also serve as the Chief Diversity Officer. And I am so honored to be able to spend this time with, with you. Hey, I need you to do me a huge, huge favor. Stand up, stand up, stand up, please. Stand up, stand up. Stretch the legs out. Stretch the legs out just a bit. On the count of three, I want everybody to breathe in through the nose, hold it, then you're going to exhale out the mouth. One, two, three, breathe in deep, hold it, exhale. One, two, three, breathe in deep, hold it, hold it, exhale. Some of you need to work on your cardio, I'm serious. I'm serious. I mean, it was two seconds and you were like, <sighs> all right. One, two, three, breathe in deep. Hold it. Hold it. Exhale. Okay, you're going to breathe in deep one last time. And when you exhale, we're going to say APU and hold it. Here we go. One, two, three, breathe in deep. Hold it. Exhale. AP. Perfect. Now speak to somebody that's near you. Just say hello, introduce yourselves, tell them where you're from. Real quickly, just take one minute, one minute. Okay, perfect, perfect. Excellent. All right, you can have a seat. You can have a seat. Did you meet some cool people? Yes? Awesome, awesome. Well, my name's Keith. Again, I'm originally from Nashville, Tennessee. Anybody been to Tennessee before? Yeah, do we have any families from Tennessee? Okay, just, just the three of us, fantastic. Which, which city in Tennessee? Gallatin, no way, I grew up in Nashville. Nashville, born and raised. Nashville is the home of country music. Any country music fans in the space? Yes, indeed. Born and raised in Nashville, and I am not a fan of country music. I am so sorry. I am so sorry. I can appreciate the genre, but you're not going to find Patsy Cline on my playlist, all right? Well, listen, we want to have this sacred conversation with you as you adjust, prepare for the transition of your student and you transitioning back home. Uh, we understand that this is a sacred time, and we, uh, we take this very seriously. And we trust as a community, we're going to navigate this time together. Um, I can remember vividly uh, jumping into the van with my younger brother, my younger sister. My dad was driving. My mom was in the passenger side. And we were in a maroon Chevy van. It wasn't cute at all. And I can remember on the way to the college campus, it was almost like a party in the van. My younger brother was like, more chicken on the table. My dad was talking about all the plans of converting my room into a weight room. Some of you are laughing, but you had that conversation with your student in the car on the way to this campus. You should be ashamed. You should be ashamed. But as we got closer to campus, I noticed that all the laughter, all the singing, all the jokes, they started to dissipate. And it got really, really quiet. And I looked, I could see it, I can vividly remember this. I, I could see my mom diagonal, diagonally positioned from me in the passenger side, like really, really crying. And I know they were tears of joy, but I know it was also sadness about, man, this is a different season for our family. And my dad was so tough. He was so cool. He had that conversation with me. Hey, Keith, remember that you're always a hall. Remember God is always watching over you. You remember to pray every day. And I appreciated that. And it wasn't until like two years ago when we were at Thanksgiving dinner, with this story actually came up. 
And I said, Mom, hey, I remember you crying. And my mom was like, Keith, please. Your dad was crying the whole way on. <laughs> like, why didn't anybody ever share that? So I'm like, Dad was also crying. He had that lump in the throat, too. <laughs> so we're going to talk a little bit today about the transition uh, some things that you can bear in mind. I also understand in this audience, we have parents, family members, you've gone through this before. And so you're going to be a nice resource to those families who are going through this process for the first time. Uh, but again, we are so excited that you're a part of our, of our community. So one thing I want to really highlight here at APU, we value holistic success for our students. So at some institutions, it's completely cool for students to go to class, to make good grades, and that's it. But for us, we have a grander vision for your student. Yes, we want your student to be intellectually stimulated. We want them to grow. We want them to, to excel academically. But we also want them to be connected socially. We think that's critical. And that's the reason why we have them right now outside spending time with alpha leaders and with peers. Because for us to advance the work of God in the world is so important for us to be socially engaged. And so we take that very seriously. We want students to be emotionally stable. We want them to be physically healthy. But most importantly, as a Christian higher ed institution, we really want students to think critically and take very seriously their relationship with the Lord. We want them to think about, hey, how is God going to use all the resourcing that he's deposited within me to make a difference for the kingdom? And we're very intentional about integrating that all throughout their experience. And so we want to make, make sure you understand that that is our approach in fostering student success for, uh, for your student. The other thing that we want to uh, make you aware of is that of our cornerstones. APU has four cornerstones. They are Christ, scholarship, community, service. Say those with me. Christ, scholarship, B minus. I'm going to give you a B minus. Let's try it again. Everybody shout it out loud. Christ, one more time. Those are our values, and they're reflected all throughout our operation. By the way, your grade elevated from a B minus to an A plus that last couple of times. Give yourselves a round of applause. Fantastic. Fantastic. All right. Well, let's have some fun real quickly. Uh, some of you have heard of the mindset list. It's a good way for us to understand the cultural and generational differences between your student and, and, and your experience. So let's, let's start with this one. It's, prob it's very likely that your student never licked a stamp. <laughs> How many of you remember licking a stamp, putting it on an envelope? How did we survive that? Oh, my goodness. Remember, we used to sit down at a table, pull out a sheet of paper, grab a pen, take 30 minutes and write a letter, fold it up, put it in an envelope, wrote the address on the front, the return address, and we would find a stamp that 33 people had touched. <laughs> and we licked that stamp. <laughs> thank the Lord. Thank the Lord for his grace. Can I get an amen for the congregation? <laughs> all right. All right. Here's the next one. Do y'all know what that is? Oh, you're old. If you know what this is, you're old. Excuse me. You're seasoned. You're seasoned. <laughs> A rotary phone, right? If we were to hand this over to, to many of our students, our first-year students, our transfer students, they would not know what to do with it. Yeah, rotary phones. Man, everything's smartphone and digital now. What about this? Oh, see, that brought back memories in the room. That woke you up. How many of you remember the beeper? You couldn't tell me anything. When I had that beeper on my bell, I thought I was so cool. And you knew you were cool if you could, if you could um, cast messages on the beeper. So if you got a message and it had 911, you thought you were something else. Y'all remember those days? Yeah, yeah. How about this? If you go to a place and it doesn't have public Wi-Fi, 
it's not where it's at. That's how your student feels, right? Wi-Fi needs to be accessible to everybody. And then if I don't understand something, I don't go to the library. I don't go to another room, to the bookshelf where there's encyclopedias. What do I do? I Google it. I Google it. Hey, how many of you remember back in the day you used to go to the library and you would go down to the basement and you would make copies and you had quarters and dimes and nickels in your pockets? Boy, those days are over with, aren't they? It's a new day. It's a new day. Uh, some other ones on the list. Your student has always known astronauts live in space. Not that they've been in space, but astronauts literally live in space. That's always been a part of their understanding. Secondly, if you see, um, <laughs> if you see the, the initials LBJ, what comes to mind for this audience, LBJ? Yeah, many of you said it, you know, historians, Lyndon B. Johnson. For your student, you know the name that comes to mind? LeBron James. <laughs> how things, how things change, all right? Cool. Cool. So what I would like to do for the next few minutes is, is talk through this psychosocial construct. It's actually research-based. It's, um, it's developed by author Chickering, and he highlights some of the stages of development that college students go through as they navigate the collegiate experience. And so one of the reasons why we like to share this with families is so you get a sense of what your student will experience, perhaps some of the decisions that they will make uh, so that you can have empathy as you get updates from your students and you know how to, how to respond. So, uh, so let's walk through these seven vectors really quickly and, uh, and talk through them. So vector number one is developing competence. And so students, they start this process of developing intellectually, physically, relationally, one thing that we know about um, research that's tied to, to Vector 1 and the overall student experience, it is, so, it is very common for your students to change their major and maybe even change it more than once or twice and maybe even a third time. That's not uncommon. And so we always want families to know, don't be startled by that. Don't be alarmed by that, okay? Don't, don't, don't be rattled by that. There are some students that come to APU, they are fully resolved about their major, the profession that they want to go in. And so the major that they declare as a first year student, they stick with that until the point of graduation. That's completely fine. But we have some students, they start with the major, they may be undecided through the process of taking general education courses, having conversations with faculty who have worked in the field, sometimes it clarifies some of their vocational interest, okay? So the bottom line is don't fret. This is part of the process, okay? Can I get some head nods in the space if you're still awake and you're with me? Okay, don't be alarmed. And some of you may even have to hold each other accountable. So when your daughter calls and say, Dad, I, I'm not majoring in pre-med, I want to major in psychology, Please do not call President Morris and say, what are y'all doing to my baby? Okay, this is part of the process, okay? It's okay, that's vector one. Vector two, managing emotions. So students learning the power of their emotions, anger, frustration, understanding how to effectively manage them, the notion of being self-aware but also demonstrating self-control. As you can imagine, Across the collegiate experience, students are exposed to new things, new relationships, new dynamics, new challenges. Okay? Sometimes their emotions will peak. They'll have joyous moments that they'll call and report to you on. They, have mo they may have moments when they're a little low. Okay? I'm reminded of a student, a first-year student, this was years ago, uh, who in high school made nothing but A's, literally straight A's on everything. And literally the first couple of weeks of the semester turned in a paper and got a B plus. And the student was devastated. Devastated. 
I mean, literally was at my desk talking through, like, like really frustrated. Like, I, I, I'm so upset with my professor. Now, that student may be your student. If they call you, you're going to, everything in you, I, I, can, I can sense it in this room. Everything in you is going to rise. Your, your, your blood may even start to bubble. And you may even go take this step. And say, What's that professor's name? And give me their email address. And so once you start to say those things and feel those experiences, please take a deep breath like we did earlier and, and, and do your best to coach your student through that process. One thing that we always want to encourage families to do is to always support the autonomy of your student. And listen, I can relate. I have a son who will graduate from college next May. And I teach this stuff. I share this stuff all the time. But I remember his sophomore year, he called me. And it was an issue that he was having in one of his, uh, his classes. And I said, what's that instructor's name? And I pulled out my laptop. And I saw her profile picture. And I'm reading her credentials. And then I pulled up my inbox and thank the Lord for a good wife. <laughs> and my wife said, Keith, calm down. All right, let's talk to KJ. Let's help him discover healthy ways that he can resolve it. And so my wife, she's a licensed professional therapist. And she said, KJ, I know you're disappointed with that grade. But did you talk to the professor after class about it? I was frustrated. So that's a no. And I'm thinking to myself, why is my wife so calm in this moment? And she was like, well, did you really study progressively like you should have? I remember when I talked to you on FaceTime and it seemed like you were trying to cram. And so when you try to cram in college, sometimes that doesn't work. And then it got really quiet and I'm thinking to myself, I need to really shut up and just listen to this woman. She's taking care of business. So, so the point that I'm making, it, any kind of way you can empower your student to, to enhance their autonomy, to, to not be discouraged by maybe a low grade or if something doesn't go as expected, but really processing with them so that they gain the skill to be able to navigate challenging times, we know that that's going to serve them well in the long run. Can I get an amen from the congregation? Is that all right? Okay, are we all on the same page? I thought I would get applause for that example. At least I thought, I, I thought there would be some. I'm just liberally sharing these stories with you. I mean, good grief, all right? All right, that's vector, that's vector two. You can tell I'm a son of a pastor because I'm moving way too slow through these vectors. That's what you're telling me telepathic. You're like, hey, you need to speed up, brother. All right, here we go. Vector three, vector three, developing autonomy. So being able to take care of oneself, both emotionally and practically, mastering task and responsibility, enabling students to become independent. We just alluded to that, but let me share one more story. So I remember when I was an RA, a resident assistant, yeah, any, any former RAs? Fantastic, thank you, thank you. Um, so I remember being an RA, it was literally the Shart, it was called Shart, and I, I was in the basement, and I had my own room, and diagonal from my room was, was the laundry room. And I remember one Saturday morning, walking outside of my door, and there was literally a mom in the laundry room Y'all remember those, those big gray boom boxes back in the day? With a gray boom box with, I mean, Motown classics just booming, right? I mean, she was playing The Temptations. You know that song? I got on a cloudy when it's cold outside. I got the Come on, everybody. Uh, you can clap. What can? My God. Okay, okay, we made an edit. We made an edit. All right, listen. So I came out. She is really just moving. Hair tied up, dancing back and forth. 
uh, tied all over the place, a tin of cookies, and the boom box right there. And she's literally doing one of my students' laundry. Students know where to be found. So I know some of the parents in this room, you're like, what's wrong with this? There's nothing wrong with this. What a loving, engaged mother. You don't want dirty laundry all throughout the residential space. I mean, the odor and the stench. Th this is good public service. This is good demonstration of care, right? Please, mothers and dads, don't come on to campus and do the laundry of your student, okay? For your student. But I went in, I talked to the mom. She was super, super nice. And I said, hey, where's, your st where, where's the student? She said, oh, he's in his room. So I went down, knocked on the, on the door, and I said, hey, man, um, I just saw your mom, and she's folding up your boxers in the laundry room. I said, do you know how to do your laundry? He's like, I don't know how to do my laundry. I said, what? I said, it's not that hard. I said, come on, walk with me. We went back to the laundry room, and I said, hey, mom, I don't mind teaching your son how to do his own laundry. And that way you don't have to make any special trips on Saturday morning to do his laundry. And she said, you would do that? I said, absolutely, very simple. So she grabbed the boom box, she was walking out, and I said, hold up, leave those tin of cookies right there though. <laughs> All right? The bottom line is, you know, please, please support the autonomy of your student. Here at APU, we really value community, and we have a ton of staff, student leaders, faculty, who are willing to walk with your student to support their independence. Um, and please know, as I share that, I don't want you to interpret that as if your student doesn't need you because that's so far from the truth. The truth of the matter is your student desperately needs you. I want you to receive that. Your student needs to hear your voice. They need to see your text messages. They need to know that mom and dad are praying for me because I got this final exam tomorrow. Or they're nervous because they have an oral presentation and it's going to be in front of 20 students. They need to know that you are, that they are at the top of your mind. And I'm going to be honest with you. As part of the APU team, I'm going to be very frank. We need you. You're a part of the village. In the past, I've talked to some parents. They're like, hey, once I drop them off, they're all yours. We appreciate that sacred trust, and we take that seriously. But you know better than I do, your student still needs your engagement. It just looks a little bit different. Does that make sense, everybody? Can I get some head nods in the space to make sure you're still trekking with me? Yeah, they still need you. Sometimes they act cool and they answer the phone, they act like they're busy, but they love hearing your voice. I'm sorry, but I gotta tell you another story. I, I just have so many stories after being here at APU for 12 years. I remember sitting with a student who was just in, um, she was really distraught because of a poor grade that she received. And I was talking with her we were developing a plan, but she was still crying. And it, it was providential. During that conversation, the, the student's mom called. And she looked at it, and she was trying to be respectful. She was trying to give me her attention. And she looked, and she said, oh, that's my mom. I'll call her back. And I said, girl, you better pick up that phone right now. She picked up the phone. And literally a 30 second conversation with mom caused so much of that angst to dissipate. That's the power that you have. And literally once she hung up, she said, Dr. K, I'm good. I said, all right, thank you. Thank you, thank you, mom. So can we shout out all the moms? Can we show some love to all the moms in the place? All the moms, the grandmoms, the aunties. That's awesome. And then we would be remiss if we didn't show love to the dads too. Show some love to the dads and the uncles. Now ladies, y'all could have done, why y'all do that to us? Y'all give us that half-hearted love. You know we're doing the best we can. Ladies, can we show some love to the dads? 
Thank you. <laughs> All right, here it is, Vector 4, Vector 4. All right. I know they're like, Man, who is this Denzel lookalike up here walking us through some vectors? Good grief. I have never clapped this much in my life. My hands are raw. Good grief. And if he tells one more story. <laughs> Y'all don't like my stories? They usually keep you awake towards the end. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Here we go. Establishing identity tend to deeply reflect on the question, who am I? Yeah, say that with me. Who am I? Yeah, so we want students to think critically about their spiritual identity, about their God-given design. And we believe that our identity is not a coincidence. And there's purpose saturated, tied to our existence. And so we want students to develop clarity on their, their spiritual values, their, their beliefs, even the way God has made them, their identity, their culture, their ethnicity, and be a good steward of who they are. Okay, that's important. All right, here it is, Vector 5, freeing interpersonal relationships. And so students transitioning from dependence to interdependence, cultivating healthy relationships from, uh, from peers, well, excuse me, with peers, with faculty, with staff. What I love about APU, we are a very diverse community. We have students that come from all across the nation, all around the globe. President Moore shared it in his remarks. You may not know this, 65% of our students identify as students of color. 25% are first generation college students, right? Students from everywhere and learning together under the banner and the mission of, of Christ. And so students will have great opportunities to learn how to rub elbows, work in collaboration, serve collaboratively. This past summer, we had over 350 students during the summer when they could be playing video games, sleeping in, they made the decision, no, I wanna go across the globe and be a blessing to communities. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? It's fantastic. Fantastic. And so perhaps your student will decide to participate in global engagement experiences, or they'll participate in local engagement experiences even here um, in LA County. All right, vector six is developing purpose. So starting to have crystallized understanding of career and life goals and making uh, really thoughtful choices that kind of hone their direction. And then vector seven is establishing integrity. So the ability to deal with the uncertainties, the abstracts of the abstracts of life. Okay, so those are the seven vectors. We made it through them. Through them. Let me look out here. You're still awake. Like eyes are still open. Give yourselves a round of applause. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. Okay, pull out a sheet of paper. Pop quiz. Okay, you got to recall all the vectors real quickly. Everybody, pull out. I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. That wasn't a good joke. I'm sorry. I'll recant that one. I won't use that one next year. I could tell by your reaction. And some of you gave me like the pity laughter, like we, we just, <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll retract that one from the list. Okay. All right. So what role does family play in the process? So you met someone a few minutes ago. You introduced yourselves. Okay. You know where that person's from. I want you to reintroduce, and I want y'all to tackle this question. How can you be of the greatest support to your student, especially in this season of their lives? This is an adjustment. We talked about it, okay? But as you contemplate in this space, out, away from your student, how can you be the greatest resource to your student? So I want you to have that conversation with uh, the person in your area, okay? You're just gonna take, do it like two, three minutes. Again, if you didn't do this, share your name, where you're from, okay? Your credit card information, all those details that are critical, you know, especially in your first, your first engagement, all right? Do it, go, go. You got three, three, four minutes, have that conversation. Okay, what role does family play in the process?
Okay, perfect. Perfect. Thank you for sharing with the person near you. So real quickly, what did you hear? What were some of the ideas? And you could just yell them out. We're family in this space. If you think about this question, I'm going to put it back on the screen for our consideration. What role does family play in the process? What are some words, what are some thoughts that immediately came to mind? Let me hear from you. What, what, what was that again? A, a cheerleader, someone who's supportive. That's important. What's your name, Mel? With the glasses and in the dress? What's your name? Victoria, where are you from, Victoria? San Diego, let's give Victoria a round of applause. Thank you for sharing, Victoria. Glad you're a part of our community. Let me get somebody on this side. Somebody on this side, what, what did you talk about? What did you discuss? Sa <laughs> what is your name? Linda, where are you from? I'm sorry? Granite Bay, California. Let's give her a round of applause. Glad you're here. By the way, her response was, send money. And I hear all the students telepathically hearing that saying, yes, 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 Venmo. All right. <laughs> all right. Some other responses on this side. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Helping them to learn responsibility on their own. Obviously, you've already created the foundation for them. You've already invested in them. And so it's for them to build on what they've learned from you, those values that they've, um, that, they've, that they've been able to embrace through your teaching. And not just you, but so many others who are a part of your village, whether that's, whether that's the pastor at the local church or coaches or teachers. So that's a really good response. What's your, what's your name, sir? Henry. Where are you from, Henry? Where? To Larry. Very good. Let's give Henry a round of applause. Thank you so much. So here in Southern California, Henry, we won't take offense today with your Raiders cap. We won't take offense. You're part of the family. You always have that one uncle. <laughs> Henry, we're glad you're here. Let's show Henry some love again. We appreciate you. Appreciate you. All right, let's get one more response. One more response. One more. Care. I, I love that. What's your name, sir? Bran? No, no, I want to pronounce it correctly. Brand? Rand. How did you hear that and I didn't hear that? I need to have my hearing checked. I'm serious. Like all of you are like, Rand, I'm, I did not hear Rand. Say, say the response again. Care packages. Are, students love care packages. Rand, where are you from? Chicago. Chicago from Chi-Town. Show Rand some love, y'all. Fantastic. So Rand, um, see me afterwards. I'll give you my address too. So as you send one to your student, and, 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 and President Morris and I, we're on the same floor. I'll share, I'll share what you, no, I'm just teasing. Really, I'm not. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right. Hey, give yourselves a hand for participating in that conversation. That's fantastic. So this is the last thing I'll share. We actually polled our students, and we asked them that question. We said, hey, how can your family be of the greatest support to you? And uh, we pulled aside a few juniors and seniors who were accustomed to the rhythm, rhythms of navigating the collegiate life and demand. And here's some of the responses that they, that they shared, okay? The first one is, stay connected, but give me space. So students, they still wanna be in touch with you as their family. They wanna hear your voice. They wanna know you're praying for them. They want to hear from their siblings. If they have like younger siblings, they want to spend some time like FaceTime or whatever the case is. And listen, how many of you have pets? They want to see those pets too. They may want to see the pets more than you. 
hey? But, but stay connected. That's so, so important. Is that encouraging for family members to hear? Yes. Is that encouraging? Some of you, like, some of you are like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm dropping them off to y'all. All right. Stay connected. Here's the next one. The next one, please ask questions, but not too many. Hey, so they like it when you're curious, but they don't want it to be like an interrogation. All right, I see some guilty people in this audience. I, I know the sound of guilty laughter. Come on, let's go ahead and confess it. If you've been guilty of asking way too many questions, go ahead and raise your hand. You'll feel free. You'll feel free if you just admit it. Thank you, Dad. I appreciate you for, for admitting. Yes. So, so be strategic about the questions that you pose. You know, don't go overboard. What were you wearing today? Did you brush your teeth? Yeah, don't be asking questions like their bad breath is not going to harm you 2,000 miles away, all right? They'll be okay. But some of you are like, well, but that dental bill will hurt me. All right, I get it, all right? Here's the next one. <clears throat> Share your counsel, but allow me to think critically. So they see you as, as a source of wisdom, and you know that. You know, when you're talking to your student, especially if they're dealing with a significant dilemma, please process with them. Let them think about it from different angles and different perspectives. You know, have them consider like who are uh, some other um, resources and, and, and uh, elements of support on the campus life, whether that's the tutoring center or a faculty member that can be a resource or, you know, if they need someone to talk to, we got campus pastors on campus. If they're going through something emotionally, right? We have a university counseling center where we have highly qualified licensed professional therapists. So there are resources on campus that can help them support, uh, help support them through difficult times or challenges. They may not need any of those resources, but it's always important to know that they are there, right? To support the holistic development. But, but provide that counsel and give them the opportunity to land on the decision. This was tough for me. I remember two years ago, my son moved into a residential space where there was three other guys staying. And they made the decision that, hey, we're going to all share our food. And you know, some people have an unreasonable appetite. And my son loves Lucky Charms, and they went to Costco, and they did their run, and everything's in big boxes. But one of his roommates was just on a marathon to try to empty a box of Lucky Charms in one sitting. And I remember all the guys were frustrated, and he called me and said, Dad, I'm just frustrated with this dude. I mean, three bowls of Lucky Charms in one sitting? That's just... That's unbelievable. And I knew exactly what he needed to do. And as a good, engaged, competent father, it was right on the tip of my tongue. I was going to tell him word for word. After you hang up from this call, you go into that room, and this is exactly what you say. And then guess what happened? My wife magically appeared. <laughs> and we put him on... <laughs> I promise I'm a good parent. I promise I am. <laughs> but I thank the Lord for the support of my wife, all right? The two shall become, praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. Yeah, when we, when we hear something, when you say praise the Lord, you say it back to me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah, good. Let's try it again. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Perfect, perfect. But we talked him, we talked with him, and, and, and my wife was so affirming. She said, yeah, I could see how that would be frustrating. Yeah, that's upsetting. And Lucky Charms are expensive nowadays. I'm like, wow. <laughs> but after processing with him, it took a little longer than probably we would, we would have liked. But he was able to land on his own path of resolution. And guess what? He was able to engage. He was able to own it. And then he was empowered for the next challenge that would come his way. I think the point that I'm trying to make 
and know that I'm sharing this humbly, let's make sure that we don't rob our students of opportunities for them to grow, to establish autonomy, to be able to handle difficult conversations and difficult situations when they emerge. Because the truth of the matter is I know I can't be with my son all the time. Only God is omnipresent. But I can teach him skills that will be a blessing to him and hopefully others that he interacts with even beyond my presence. Does that make sense, family? Okay, so please share counsel, but allow them to think critically. Here's the last one. Here's the last one. Expect change and please be supportive in the process. Probably the common denominator in every college student's experience is change. That's what we want. We want them to mature, we want them to grow. We want them to think at a, at a deeper level. We want them to be more self-aware. We want them to be more conscientious of the world and think of ways that they're going to impact the world in positive ways for God's glory. Those things are going to happen. And so as they change, oftentimes there are growing pains. Please remember to be supportive. I promise you here at APU, as your student goes through different iterations of growth, we're going to be supportive. We're going to encourage them. If they have a hiccup, we're going to have a difficult conversation with them. You know why? Because we love them. And that's what God has purposed us to do. I want you to know the work that we do here at APU, we don't take it for granted. Know that I'm not a brother on the stage in a role where I see it as a job. President Moore is the same way. We see this as a calling, a sacred calling that we get to fulfill. And I know it's not just me, it's cabinet colleagues, it's our faculty. This past Monday, I was in a room with about 300 student leaders who came to campus the first week in August. And they're walking this campus praying, wanting to make sure that the journey and the experience for your student is seamless. I want you to know we take what we do here very seriously. And our motivation is all about God receiving the glory. Is that all right, everybody? Can we give God praise for that? That's our, that's our posture. That's our disposition. That's who we are. The last thing I'll share with you because I have a bit of a request. So uh, this is a tradition that we have here at APU. You know, right now, this is exciting time, filled with joy, and it will continue to be that way over the course of your student's journey. But some of you remember in college, once you get to that fourth, that fifth, that sixth week, sixth week it gets a bit challenging. And so one thing we would like to do, and we need your support, we would love for you to write a note to your student that we're going to hold, but strategically share with them later in the semester that gives them wind under their wings. It's gonna be unexpected. They know nothing about this, but we're gonna give you cards. We're gonna give you an envelope. We're gonna give you a pencil. And if you'll just take five minutes to write just an affirming, loving note to your student. So the fifth, the sixth week, the seventh week of the semester, they find in their mailbox this wonderful note from you that you penned and drafted this very night. How many of you can support that effort for us tonight? Can I get all the hands up? It's going to be a lot of fun. So thank you so much. And then this is the other thing. I, I'm, for some of you that write fast, hey, let me see your eyes because I really need your help on this. After writing a note to your student, you got to imagine a class size of, of our first year students and even transfer students. There are some students, their family members can't be here. But we still want those students to receive a note. 
And so out of your generosity, will some of you be willing to write an extra note? And it can be blank. You don't have to put the, student, you know, your na- the student's name on the front. We'll take care of that. But we want all of our students to be graced by a note of encouragement, of affirmation from the community. So can we get a few of you that's willing to, to write a few extra notes for, for students that may not have family members that are here? Thank you so much. We appreciate that. Hey, I need you to do me a huge favor. Can we make some noise for our Student Government Association who's helping us out tonight? Appreciate them. They are fantastic. And look, th- there's the president over there. Travis, raise your hand. Travis Gray is our president of SGA. Appreciate him and our leadership team. Okay, so let's, let's turn on some music. And if you don't mind, go ahead and draft those notes. Remember, write your student's full name on the front of the envelope. And then for those of you who are willing, please be so kind to write an extra note that will be a blessing to students that may not have family members who are here tonight, okay? Thank you. <laughs> 